This is my dog, Chewbacca. He's my first dog, and I love him very, very much. But he's skittish, and last year he ran away from a dog sitter far from my home. As my partner and I desperately searched through the woods for him, we were limited to the traditional tools. We had our voices, our eyes, we posted lost dog signs. We got phone calls of people who saw him running across streets late at night, and we feared that he would be hit by a car, or starve, or be lost forever. This is Chewbacca today, safe back at home. He now wears a GPS device that pings satellites to determine his geolocation everywhere he goes. I can pull the information up on my phone anytime I want. I get push notifications when he leaves the house, and I can even see his sleep and activity details. <laughs> now, Chewbacca had a fairly digital free life before this, but as a beloved member of my family, who often decides to run when he encounters loud noises or new places, it brings me tremendous comfort to know that I have opted into these nearly magical modern digital tools to ensure that I could find him if he ran away again. But Chewbacca did not agree to wear this tracker. He did not consent to its use, and he doesn't even know that I'm using a combination of satellites, cell towers, and accelerometers to constantly transmit his data through third parties. But he also doesn't have to fear identity theft, doesn't have to worry about discrimination at work if his coworkers find out he goes to synagogue every Friday, or wonder if the very large number of hours that he sleeps every day will count against his health insurance premiums. <laughs> I alone made the decision to share this information for his safety in case he ever gets lost again. But you are not Chewbacca. You have rights, you have agency that extends beyond basic questions like, can I eat that now, please? And you can make choices and trade-offs about the conveniences you want in your life, how you choose to protect your own safety, and what information you generate and share about yourself. Nonetheless, I venture a guess that nearly all of us in this room have chosen to share intimate digital information about ourselves with electronic devices that we carry everywhere we go, our smartphones. Now, I was recently traveling alone and lost my phone, and an almost physical wave of panic washed over me at the notion that it might be gone. I quickly realized that this small device that fits in the palm of my hand had become my most consistent and versatile safety net. Now, we're here today to talk about transportation, and here I am talking dogs and phones. But the case that I want to make to you today is that it's time to start thinking of your car in the same way that you think of your phone. That the safety and convenience features that connected cars can bring may transform your life even more fundamentally than your phone. But that the safety case is even more critical when it comes to cars. Because your phone doesn't move you down the highway at 60 miles an hour. Over 37,000 Americans don't die each year in phone accidents. This is how many Americans died in car crashes in 2016. So if there was a chance that technology could prevent me or my loved ones from becoming one of these statistics by sharing the same sensitivity of information with my car that I already share with my phone, I would take it in a heartbeat. Now, lucky for us, that chance has arrived. So we live in a world where 94% of car crashes are caused in some way by human error. And every day, new technologies are being developed that can mitigate that error. So I want to argue that given these numbers, the case is so much stronger for opting in and sharing information with your car than even your phone, which is something we have all already chosen to do. Now, as with smartphones, your car will need information in order for these features to function. And as with smartphones, the companies involved will need to safeguard your privacy in order for you to use and trust the technology. More and more, all new cars are starting to come with these features. In some cases, the safety case may be so persuasive that consumers won't be given a choice, just as we eventually weren't given a choice about seatbelts. So the truth is that, yes, your car will be learning more about you, but what it learns may save your life. Now, part of the challenge with this shift 
is that Americans have a very unique relationship with our cars. We've long thought of cars as these mechanical chassis that guarantee our autonomy and our freedom, and often in conjunction, our privacy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This heightened expectation of privacy is reflected in our lives as well as our laws, with new rules around privacy in the car evolving over time. But cars have long collected data. Nearly every car for decades has had an event data recorder and an onboard diagnostic system. But in the past few years, there's been an explosion in the variety, the connectivity, and the volume of data in the car. These new features are enabling Jetson-like technologies. I'll give you a few examples. Automatic emergency braking uses radar or camera-based sensors to detect if you're about to hit an object on the road and you haven't braked quickly enough, and they'll brake automatically. Eye tracking technologies can tell if a driver is falling asleep at the wheel and alert them to get them to wake up. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication can send basic safety messages from your car to nearby cars on the road to notify them if you've had to brake suddenly or gotten into a crash so that the driver six cars back can know that he needs to slow down before he runs into you, thus preventing a pileup. Now, another big shift is connectivity. So whereas before, in order to get access to the information on your car, a technician had to plug into a port Today, it can be transferred almost instantaneously to a growing number of parties. It could go to cars nearby on the road. It could go through the cloud to your vehicle manufacturer, who can notify you of defects or issues. And it could go through the cloud to your apps, so that the music you listen to in the car syncs with what you'll later hear on your computer. The other big shift is the volume of data in the car. So autonomous cars that are being tested today can generate up to one gigabyte of data per second. That means they could go through my entire cell phone plan worth of data for the month in less than a minute. Now, autonomous cars use this much data because they're constantly going through a machine learning process where they're analyzing each prior incident and decision to ensure that any mistakes that are made won't happen again, both for that car and for any other car in the autonomous fleet. Now, these features and many more will go a very long way in mitigating, again, the vast majority of crashes that are caused by human error. But for these features to work, they'll need data, your data. So the question that we face, given how strong the safety case is today, is how do we go about balancing safety and privacy and convenience and creepiness? In a world where car companies are becoming technology companies that trade in personal data and vice versa, how do we ensure that we incorporate best practices around data and privacy from other technology sectors into the car ecosystem? So the truth is that we're already starting to do it. Courts are starting to recognize that we have a heightened expectation of privacy in digital devices that contain information about ourselves. The Federal Trade Commission it's a consumer protection agency that safeguards consumers against unfair or deceptive business practices, ensuring that companies keep their words to consumers and treat them fairly. Car makers recognize that you won't use these technologies unless you trust them. So in 2014, nearly all of them agreed to a set of privacy principles that state that they commit to transparency, to obtaining affirmative express consent before sharing information for marketing, and to limiting sharing with law enforcement. But there's more work to do. Many of us may have gotten into rental cars and seen the prior driver's contacts preloaded on the screen, or plugged in our phone to charge in a car and seen the data instantaneously transferred. Imagine what could happen if you sold a used car and it had your home address stored in the GPS and your garage door code programmed into the buttons. So consumers need meaningful transparency. We need the opportunity to learn what information a car will generate and share in something other than a six-page legal contract at the end of a long car purchase negotiation. We need choice and control where possible, 
especially for infotainment information that isn't as critical to vehicle operation. We need a wipe data option and a privacy setting screen, just as we have in our smartphones. Now, as more and more vehicles incorporate these features, soon you won't want to rely on the traditional tools to protect your safety, just as, you no longer, just as we no longer do with Chewbacca. As connected cars become as important to your safety as seatbelt, data privacy will too. Soon, you won't want your loved ones in the car without it. Thank you.